Shuram Sultan, the path from a slave to one of the most powerful women of the Ottoman Empire. The conquest of the Sultan's heart. Once upon a time, there lived a Sultan, and his name was Suleiman. Sultan Suleiman I ruled the Ottoman since 1520 for a long 42 years. He was an outstanding Turkish ruler, legislator, and reformer, in whose reign the empire reached its greatest heyday. However, this fame doesn't exclusively have to do with his important political deeds, but also with his love for a simple Slavic slave. Nastya Lusovskaya would become not only his beloved legal wife, but also, contrary to all rules, would give birth to six sultan's children. Young Anastasia, daughter of a priest from Rogatina, western Ukraine, was taken prisoner and brought to Istanbul. There, the girl was lucky to be bought from the slave traders by the Sultan's best friend and faithful associate, Hargalui Ibrahim Pasha, who presented her to Suleiman as a gift of honor of the Sultan's ascension to the throne. Ironically, Ibrahim Pasha, who helped Anastasia enter the Sultan's harem, would become her worst enemy. Now part of the harem, the young captive immediately receives a new name, Hurem, which in Persian means one who brings joy or the cheerful one and perfectly highlights the girl's cheerful character. Soon, charming Hurem manages to become Sultan Suleiman's consort and favorite. This fact doesn't particularly please the Sultan's other favorite, Mahid Evran. The beautiful Circassian woman had already given birth to Sultan's son, Mustafa, and didn't intend to lose her Sultan to another consort. A terrible argument happened between the two women in love with the Sultan in the course of which Mahid Evran badly scratched Turem's face, ripping some of her hair off, and tore the poor girl's dress, declaring she was the Sultan's only woman, and that the other consorts must obey her. In response to Mahid Evran's vicious act, the infuriated Sultan made Hurem his favorite consort. So it was that the era of Hurem began in the harem. A young yet astute girl, she understands how she needs to act in order to survive in the harem of the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, a most complicated environment. Fortunately, she meets allies who provide her with useful advice. Initially, Hurem hated the harem and secretly harbored the wish to burn the place to the ground. But upon meeting Suleiman, she falls in love with the Sultan completely and irrevocably and decides to stay and make the place she'd once hated her true home to strengthen her sway over the Sultan's heart, and later over the harem too, Hurem adopts Islam, advised by Sumbul Aga, a eunuch who supported her. It is not an easy decision for the daughter of a Christian priest. But Hurem was thus able to burn all the bridges with her past and ensure the Sultan's everlasting loyalty. On the occasion, Hurem said to Suleiman, I would like to believe in what you believe, it is with your eyes that I wish to look at the sun, and I wish to see what you see. I want to believe in Allah and accept your faith. Suleiman was elated to hear that, and his answer was, I will be a slave to your heart and your soul, Hurem. According to Sumbul Aga, an unfaithful woman can never become a mistress. So for Hurem, adopting Islam was rather a politically motivated step in order to become the mistress of the harem. There was a certain hierarchy within the Sultan's harem, which was strictly honored. The mother of the Sultan, Hafsa Sultan, was considered the mistress of the harem. And then it was Mahid Evran Sultan, who'd given the Sultan his son Mustafa. Mustafa was considered the main heir to the throne after Suleiman. However, young Hurem, who lucky for her was a very fertile woman, joined the race. Suleiman and Hurem's first child was their son, Mehmed. And because a Shehzadeh was born, Hurem became the third most important woman in the harem. At that time, Hurem Sultan and Mahid Evran Sultan were really going head to head. While they initially fought for the Padishah's heart, the birth of Mehmed meant the rivalry had reached a completely different level. Each of the two women now tried to put her son on the Ottoman throne. However, this struggle wasn't dictated by a thirst for power. Much more importantly, both of the consorts wanted to save their child from the Fatih law. The Fatih's law read, and the son who will receive the Sultanate is allowed to kill his brothers in the name of the common good. This was also supported by most of the Uyema. So let them act accordingly. 
Thus, according to this cruel law, the Sultan's son, who ascended the throne, had to murder his own brothers in order to avoid a feud or civil strife. And of course, none of the women wanted that to be her child's future. Hurem Sultan was lucky to bear many sons to her Sultan. Contrary to the traditions of the Ottoman court, she gave birth to Suleiman's five sons and one daughter. Immediately after Mehmed, Hurem and Suleiman had a daughter named Mikrimah, then a son named Abdullah, who unfortunately died in infancy. His sons, Selim and Bayazud, followed, and six years later, Chihain Gir was born. With a bunch of heirs under her belt, Hurem Sultan achieved what she wanted. She became a mistress whose authority was indisputable in the harem, with even the Sultan's sisters obliged to obey her. Of course, the Sultan's sisters were not happy with the situation because, while directly related to the Ottoman dynasty by their blood, they had to obey the woman who, until not long ago, had been a slave. In addition, they considered Hurem an upstart and thought she'd bewitched the Sultan so tried every trick in the book to save him from the clutches of Hurem.